Right, we are going to jump in today for a quick tutorial on how to use the new uh, Spike Prime uh, Python. It's the micro Python that's built into the Spike Prime, just for a competition that we like to enter in with our kids to uh, look at how we can use branching and some other different things as part of the curriculum. Uh, and we're going to look at um, Python specifically for how it can serve a purpose now and moving from scratch into our early text based language. So we're going to create a new project using Python. So we're going to click on Create. And I can already see, or you can already see, that I have a spike uh, connected to this computer already. So it's already telling me um, some of the different uh, sensors and motors and stuff that I've got plugged in. So this isn't actually a uh, sumo robot that I'm using. I'm using one of the kids' uh, FLL robots that they've created. So it's got a third motor on here at the moment. They're going to add another one to it shortly. But the two motors that are driving the robot at the moment are C and D. So there's a few things I need to declare as part of the starting point of Python. Obviously our hub is equal to the prime hub. And now I'm going to work into declaring our motors. And I'm going to call my motors motor pair. And that motor pair is equal to, um, we had one motor in C, and the other motor was in D. So this now tells my hub which two motors are driving. So the same as we would use in the um, block space coding where we're saying set movement motors to. This is the exact same process that we're going through. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to declare some color sensors. So I'm going to have color sensor A is equal to color sensor and we're going to declare it as A. I need to do the other one that's in here as well. So I'm going to say color sensor B is equal to color sensor B. So again, we've just declared these two things within the program again. The next thing we need to do is we also have a distance sensor. So I need to declare it. So distance sensor is equal to distance sensor uh, and when you're seeing that text pop up we'll just quickly um, show that again it's already predicting what it could be and i want the one at the top here so i'm just going to push tab and it automatically generates that text for me which is very cool all right and that is in port f so if we go back over my movement pair is c and d so c and d i've got color sensor a color sensor B and my distance sensor is in F. So now this robot knows exactly uh, what is in what port. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a simple function here. And to create a function or a my block, uh, we put in these terms and it says DEF or define. So we're going to define this function and we're going to call it move. And this function has two parameters that I want to give it. And one of them is called power and one of them is called steering. And this is what we're going to use just to simplify some of the movement of our robot. So underneath the file, we're going to tab across and I'm just going to put in here, I'm going to refer back to my motors. So I'm going to say motor pair. And again, I've just pressed tab because that was the one I wanted at the start. And we're going to use a function that's built into, and over here on the right hand side, we can see the library that's already there. It's provided from Lego. And if you're wanting to find out more of these motor pair functions, you can actually go into some of these to be able to go through and look at some of the other different functions of the motors. The one that we're going to use today, though, is the start tank one. And basically all we're going to do is say motor pair start tank and we're going to replace these number values with the parameters from our new function. So in here we're going to put motor pair dot start underscore tank and then in the brackets we're going to put in here power minus steering. And that's the two parameters that we have at the top here for motor C and then power plus steering for motor D. So whenever we call on or we 
uh, call this function here, we need to then put two parameters in. So the first one will always be the power, the second one will then be the steering. So we're going to start now the uh, overall um, program for the sumo and we're going to use a forever loop. So we're just going to say while true and then put our semicolon in and we're going to put in here. What I want to do though is firstly set um, a variable. One of the issues at the moment with using the dis distance sensor is sometimes the distance sensor uh, basically returns a value of none. And if we're using um, a code that's asking it to record what's coming from the ultrasonic sensor or the distance sensor and it comes back as a text, what will actually happen uh, is that it will cause a runtime error and the whole program will stop. So one of the things that we need to work around here now is is what happens if the distance sensor records a value of none. So we need to actually create a variable here first. And I'm going to call this one distance. And distance will be equal to my distance sensor, so the second one down. And we're going to use, again, you can come over here to find all the stuff for the distance sensor. We're going to use a um, function called get distance. And we want to get the distance in centimeters. And then we close brackets on the end to be able to use this particular function. So whenever I refer back to distance now, this is what it's actually doing when I use that word. So if, and I come back to just basically the teaching of Sumo now. So uh, if you're unfamiliar with Sumo, it's a one meter circle board. And that board has a five centimeter white ring around the outside. So the whole the whole point of the competition basically is that the robots are designed to push each other out of that circle. If the robot gets to the white line, uh, it needs to see that white line and basically respond to it. So if it does see a white line and it's driving towards it, we want the robot to actually back away from the white line. So I'm going to call on my two color sensors now. So if color sensor and I'm going to use a first and I'm going to put in here dot get color and again because I'm calling on a particular function for the color sensor I need to put the um, the close brackets on the end if my color sensor is equal to white because there's a white ring around the outside of my um, circle and color sensor B, get color, is equal to white, then we want it to do something. And the symbol for then is a semicolon here as well. So, if both of my color sensors see white, that means that the front of my robot is over the top of that white line. So I'm going to use my function that I um, uh, set at the top here at the moment. So I'm going to say here move and I'm going to put some parameters in here. So I'm going to say move at negative 75 speed. So going in reverse and I'm going to tell my robot to move for a set amount of time. So I'm just going to say wait for seconds and then in brackets I'm going to tell it to wait for 0 0.5 or half of a second. So if these color sensors see white it's going to reverse for half a second. All right now we move into the next part. So we've our robot has some some safety first so it's not going to drive off the edge of the board. Now we want to have some attack we want to be able to, if we see the enemy, we want to be able to um, to charge at them. So we're going to use the next part of our code, which is going to be the else if. So if color sensors see white, if they don't, well, else if. And this is where we need to address this issue at the moment where the distance sensor is coming back and reading a none. So if distance... So if my distance center get centimeters is equal to none, so if the distance center records a value of none, 
and we know it's probably going to shoot out a few of them as it's going I actually want it to do exactly as it will if it does see an enemy so I'm going to get it to move at a hundred percent speed with no steering so I just want to go in a straight line the frequency of these nuns occurring is, is relatively low, but they do happen. If it's going to pose an issue for your robot and you see that every so often your robot actually drives off the board or does something that's a bit silly, you can actually change this back and maybe give it a lower speed. So when there is a nun, rather than it uh, continuing to drive forward in um, like at a high speed, we can just get it to drive forward at a slow speed. But just test out your robot and see what it does. The next is else if distance is less than or equal to 50 so if the robot sees something less than 50 centimeters away we we know that there's a robot there because that's all it can be so if it sees something closer than 50 centimeters away then we want it to move the same as it is if it records a no value we want it to charge at the robot. We want to drive at 100% speed and go straight as it goes. The last part of our code is basically if the robot's color sensors don't see anything, so it's not seeing white on the color sensors, and the distance sensor isn't recording any values at all, so it's it's recording uh, values bigger than 50, the robot is going to else. We're going to say move. And I don't want it to drive forward now, I actually want it to turn. So I'm going to give it a steering of 20. So if we go back over this now, we've made a function. So this is the start of looking at functions within uh, the Spike Prime. We've given two parameters which we've used to simplify our code. So move has drastically reduced the amount of code that we've had to write. We've called on uh, our color sensors using this function here of get color. You could use reflected light intensity. It's entirely up to you. Uh, your robot probably will respond quicker to the white line if you use reflected light intensity, but often it's, it's, it's quite simple just to use the color. We've moved back for half a second. We've driven forward if there's a none recorded. Uh, and if there's anything less than 50, we're driving forward again. Else, we're going to turn around until we actually see something. So this will continue as being a forever loop. So I'm just gonna put it down here now. I'm just gonna run the code that we've got. Obviously there's a robot sitting in front, so if it's working properly, it should just charge straight forward. Uh, it's seen white then, so it's reversed back. It gets stuck here, because this FLL build has um, some little tiny wheels in the front, which actually get stuck over the top of the timber. So we can see here, it's not seeing anything with the color sensors. It's not seeing something with the distance, so it's turning. Put the other robot down. Distance is triggered, so it charges, and then charges it off. Sees white and reverses back and then goes back to turning because it can't see anything anymore and then decides it wants to finish it off. So that's it.